What's up everybody, Skyberries here. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be going over the quick build tutorial for the Rebel Ruckus. In today's tutorial we'll be covering both the HD digital and analog build tutorials of this frame. Pay close attention and we can ensure you'll have a hassle-free and enjoyable build experience. All right, hit that like button, let's dive in. All right guys, this is what we got here for our Ruxus build. Uh, your parts might be different a little bit depending on what you decide to add to your kit. Um, let's tear into this. Uh, looks like we got our prints, our carbon, our hardware, we got the motors, and we elected for the speed build kit, which means that our receivers come wired, our uh, Caddox here looks like it's got the plug there with the correct length of wire. Our motors have been cut down and pre-tinned, so let's uh, let's dig into it. I think we'll start by getting the frame assembled. Just going over some of the tools we're going to be using in the build videos today. A set of needle nose pliers. We've got a set of wire cutters. We're going to have an M3 driver, M2 driver. You'll notice I've also got my electric screwdriver with an M2 driver bit in it. A number one Phillips screwdriver, set of tweezers, 1.5 millimeter driver, a rosin core, lead solder, and a wet sponge to go along with our soldering kit. All right, so let's start here with our uh, base plate. Let's grab the uh, hardware, if you're wondering which hardware and sizes to use, just refer to the hardware uh, guide sheet to find the sizes that you need. Let's grab the wrong plate here. Uh, we're going to start by inserting our stack posts into our mid plate here. Put a star nut on each one of these posts and cinch it down. Okay, there we go. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on to getting our arms bolted on. We're going to be building a six inch stretch today, so we're going to have the stretch directed forward. So we'll put the first arm on, we'll take our bottom plate, paying attention to keep the chamfer on the outside here. We'll stick our, whoops, we'll stick our screw down through. See that the arm will kind of lock into place on those base plates there. We'll grab one of our standoffs and thread him down on that post. Go ahead and do that for all four arms. last little bit. They don't need to be super tight because this Ruxus actually has a uh, arm locking set screw that will lock the arms uh, against one another so you're not relying just on the pressure on that, um, that post to, to keep your arms rigid. So we'll move on to that feature next. We're going to find two of our little thin nuts. You can see that there's a little bit of a difference if you compare the two. You'll see one nut is a lot thinner than the other. We're going to take those two thin nuts that come in the kit and we're going to drop them in, in the two recesses, the two nut captures on that mid plate there. The next thing we're going to do is while we're holding those in place, we'll grab our countersinking screws and we'll drop them in through the bottom. We'll get 
our first couple threads started through on that nut, what we're going to do is we're just going to turn that until we start to feel the tension and then we're just going to cinch that in a little bit. What that screw is going to be doing is it's going to be pushing these, these arms out in the back and in the front which forces them to contact on the sides. So periodically find that as the, the uh, hardware and the carbon starts to set, that those arms start to um, become a little bit loose, you can always just take your driver and, and cinch those up a little bit as time goes on. All right, next we're gonna move over to our ESC. Um, we're using the Rush 50 Amp Sport on this build. Just wanted to show you guys what I do to get my ESC ready to put in a build. I like to pre-tin the pads before I get it mounted on the quad just because I find it a bit easier. So the way you do that, you just get your iron nice and hot. Make sure you've got a nice clean tip. I use some of this brass wool here. A little bit of a wetted sponge as well. You can see I've got my iron set at about 410. I like to run a little bit hotter when I'm doing the uh, tinning like this. I'm just going to take some nice flux core leaded solder. Uh, this has got some rosin in it to help the solder flow. And first I'm going to put some solder on the actual tip of the soldering iron. And then I will bring the soldering iron down in contact with the pad and let it heat the pad up while I add just a touch more fresh solder. You'll see that there I have a nice clean um, shiny ball of solder that's covering the whole pad. If I were to not hold my iron there for long enough, like for instance, if I were going to be tending this larger pad and I just touch the pad, you see I don't get a uniform solder joint. If you use that whole pad, um, you're typically going to have a stronger solder joint that's going to be more resistant to crashes. If you are needing to tin a large area like this, instead of heating up the whole ESC, you can prime your soldering tip with quite a bit of solder before you even bring it down into contact with the pad. And you can see that in a short amount of time, I'm able to heat up that whole pad and add quite a bit of solder there on the top. You can also see that if I turn my iron's temperature down too low, for example, 360, I'm going to have a hard time to tin solder the motor wires. So here I'm just gonna go down the line pre-tinning my pads. this over and that smoke that you see is the rosin that is in the solder wire here burning away the rosin acts as a cleaner as it burns and smokes like that it pulls the impurities away um, from that bond between the solder and the, the pad on the board you can see here I'm going to fix up now that my iron is hotter I'm going to fix up this back pad here get a nice shiny edge there ready to solder down my power leads and my motor wires now that's ready to get put on your build this is a, a 32 bit ESC running BL Heli 32 so we'll be able to be getting our RPM filtering and these ESCs and flight controllers come pre-flashed so we don't have to mess around on the computer getting them all set up and talking to one another First thing I'm going to do is get the solder leads um, powered on. I usually, when I'm soldering the power leads, I like to run my soldering iron at about 400, maybe a little, little hotter, 410. And if you're new to soldering, there are a few tricks to getting a clean solder joint. The first one is heat. You want to get the right amount of heat, and you also want to have leaded and flux solder. Um, you can do painted on flux if you want to, but you want to have your tip clean because a clean tip will give you a lot better solder joint. So I'm going to be paying attention here to the positive signal. Um, we're going to look, and I'm, I'm just going to add a little bit of fresh solder. See that my solder is smoking because I have flux core wire, and the flux basically just cleans that solder joint. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to be lightly pushing down on this wire on the positive pad, just a very light pressure, as I bring my iron down in contact with that. 
you see it's going to take a minute to kind of soak into that pad. And I might see that it's not, um, it's fully captivated the wire, but I might want to reinforce that by, by bringing that solder joint up a little bit higher. So what I'll do, instead of leaving my iron on that pad for a long time, I'll actually put a decent amount of solder on that tip before I bring my iron down in. And you'll see that that kind of lets the solder flow down all over onto that pad without having to necessarily heat the ESC up too much. There we go, keep that wire in place. Yeah, I'm happy with that there. And we're gonna next install our capacitor here. On my capacitor, uh, I bent my leads out. What you can do with those leads straight is you can bring that up underneath the ESC and you'll just loop those leads overneath the wire, over, over top of your solder joints here. Um, these leads come quite a bit longer, so you can bring them up and you can bend them over and then you can trim them. Let me tie these leads in by just adding some solder in over the top. And you notice I, I keep my soldering iron over the joint for a little bit longer to let that solder flow through the full joint. Get a nice shiny ball there so I don't have a cold solder joint. And with the ruckus, you can see that with that capacitor, it, it is recessed lower than this bottom plate, so it's a great place to keep that capacitor solid and protected. All right, now that we've got that on, we're gonna move to getting our motors mounted. So um, we'll grab our motor hardware here, we'll scoot that over. And as a word to the wise, you don't need to over-tighten your motor hardware. Um, just finger tight is, is tight enough. You don't want to strip the motor hardware out, but you also don't want to have it come loose in flight. I've got my electric driver here that makes it a little faster for me. PVC based electrical tape. Uh, if you can find the vinyl electrical tape that stretches, the vinyl electrical tape is a lot more stretchy and uh, I find that it works a lot better. So when you're buying your electrical tape, definitely find the vinyl. All right, now that we've got a wrap on all those motor wires, it's starting to look clean. We've got our soldering iron hot. And I find that it's easiest to um, put a little bit of fresh solder on the motor wires, just have a little bit of clean flux in the mix there working with you um, to get a good joint on all these motor wires. There we go. And you'll note that I have already gone through and I've pre-tinned uh, all my motor pads uh, with fresh solder before I started building. All right, you'll probably find it easier to get a pair of tweezers, but it's easiest to just bring the motor wire and set it on top and let the iron do the work of, of sucking that wire down into the joint. order that you solder these motor wires will determine the rotation direction of the motor. Instead of reversing motor direction in software, you can also just reverse two of these wires if you find that to be easier.
there we go. Now once you get all your motor wires soldered down, make sure you don't have anything bridging in between the wires. You see this wire here is a little bit close to the edge. It's not gonna go anywhere, but I'd rather have it be in the middle there. There we go. Then I'll finish it off by just tucking my motor wires kind of under the ESC here. All right, now that we got that soldered down, we'll move on to getting the flight controller ready to go. So we bring him in here. And with these flight controllers, uh, the digital flight controller, if you're going to be using a receiver other than the DJI Air unit or the DJI Vista, then you're going to be using this expansion receiver port. And we need to select what voltage to give the receiver. If you flip the flight controller over, you'll see that there's a pad here for UART1. Uh, UART is the input we're going to be putting our receiver on because we're going to be using a TBS Nano receiver. And the Nano wants to have five volts. So we're going to bridge the right two pads to select the five volts for that UART. We'll just bridge this with a little bit of solder. So now you can see that I've connected the right two pads. So UART1 is going to take five volts and supply it to that power pin. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're ready to get it put on the quad here. So first we're going to plug it in And you'll notice that there's an arrow on the flight controller pointing forward. We want the, the, that arrow to be pointing toward the front of the quad. And you'll see that where this nose is um, signals where the front of the quad is. So we'll push him down on his little rubber gummies there and we'll grab our M3 lock nuts. Just snug those down a little bit. When you're tightening these down, you want to make sure that you're not squishing these little rubber gummies too much. You don't want them to be really squished out. You just want them to be nice and nice and snug. Now that we've got our flight controller on, we're going to move on and start getting some things plugged in. We're going to start with our GPS cable harness. We'll plug it into the port here that says NAVI. That stands for navigation. So we've got him plugged in. And next we're going to move on to our expansion receiver. Uh, we're going to be using our uh, Crossfire receiver here, but we are going to be displaying how to hook up several different receivers. So uh, dial down into the captions where there's some time annotations and we'll show you how to wire up, for example, an FR Sky receiver uh, with a different antenna style. So if you happen to be building with one of these or building one of these kits, then you can click down and, and see the time annotations to install that. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll plug it into our expansion receiver port. And now that receiver's wired up and ready to go. We're going to turn our attention now over to getting the uh, Vista DJI HD transmitter unit ready to go. Um, and he's going to mount inside this clever little backpack mount here. So we'll start by poking our camera through. And this is the uh, Nebula camera that we're going to be using. And we're going to also rotate it so that the USB-C port is at the top of the backpack. And I'll show you why we're going to do that here. First, let's push this little connector through. And it has to do with how we're doing our antenna. So you'll find um, underneath this little door is the micro UFL that we're going to plug our antenna into. So swing him off to the side. We'll grab our antenna and we'll push our antenna down through the antenna mount here. And you'll see it's 
got a little bit of a resistance fit. But to make sure that antenna isn't going to get popped up and off in a crash and put all of the stress there on the UFL, we're going to grab a little strip of electrical tape and we're going to just wrap it around the base of this antenna tube. And we're just going to stick it there and then grabbing the tube and not the antenna, we'll just roll that on there. There we go. So now the antenna can't get pushed down too far and it can't get pulled out either. So that's very secure. We'll go ahead and plug that onto the UFL port. You just press until you hear a nice little click. There we go, you'll probably feel it instead of hearing it. And then we'll take that door We'll swing it back over as a little bit of an insurance measure to make sure that UFL doesn't come separated. And we'll take our 1.5 millimeter driver and just kind of snug that screw up. Here we go, so now we're ready to bolt the Vista unit down into the backpack. And we'll do that by flipping it over, grabbing some of our M2 nuts. I'm going to use the tweezers here because sometimes I've got some fat thumbs. I like to do just one at a time, but there's a little nut capture there on the back. Then we'll use one of our M2 screws. I'm going to put my finger over that nut to keep it from falling out as I thread it through that Vista unit. I'm going to grab my uh, Phillips head here. This is just a number one Phillips driver. On to our second nut. We'll set him in his little nut trap there. Grab another one of our M2 screws here. in. I'm going to leave the door off for now because I need to be able to access the bind button here on the top. I'll just push him when it comes time to bind that to my goggles or if I'm using this as my control link as well then I'll bind it to my goggles and my DJI controller. So now that we've got that we will get our camera um, set in the camera nose cone. So let me bring that print over here. You're just going to insert that. Now pay attention to the back here. The letters for the caddix signify which direction is up. The wires are on the bottom. So you'll stick the wires in bottom first. Grab our camera hardware here. Looks like some longer M2 screws. Came with the camera hardware pack. our quadcopter here and bring him back out to the floor. The first thing we'll do is we'll take our GPS wire and we'll move him off to the side and then we'll take the backpack after getting our receiver over here. You see that our TBS receiver we put a little bit of double stick tape on there and you see the DJI connector port here. Get him plugged in. Push the backpack down on those back two standoff posts. With the camera mount, we'll get him pushed down on those front two standoff mounts. Let's be careful not to pinch our GPS cable here. 
All right now we've got our camera connected. We'll move on to getting our top plate prepared to go down on the top. Let's bring him out to the floor. And we're going to be actually mounting a, uh, a uh, this is the, the compliant base. Um, it's an adjustable TPU print. Um, there's some hardware that gets inserted in the bottom of the mount. So first we're going to start with an M3 nut. I like to use pliers for this because it is kind of a tight press. We're going to push that nut down in to the print here where there's a nut capture that will kind of hold him in place. Next thing we'll do is we'll drop an M3 lock nut down in the front here. It's going to be a really loose fit. So next we'll grab our 30 millimeter long M3 screw. We'll start to insert it. We'll thread it in as far as we can to that lock nut. You'll see that it's just spinning. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some pliers and we're just going to squeeze over that nut while we thread that on. I'm going to grab my electric driver and I'm going to thread that M3 nut or that M3 screw. I'm going to thread it through the knot lock nut into the regular nut until it's coming into the back part of this print here. Now we don't want to snug this up too much. We just want to have that screw head floating. We don't want to pinch the nut on this inner wall. And what that allows the, the print to do is as we turn this screw now, you'll see the M3 nut will just move freely and this back block gets pulled or pushed and that will control the angle that our GoPro sits at. So now that we've got that inserted, we're going to insert some M3 nuts into the top here. And I'm going to use pliers because sometimes a little fat fingered. I'm going to do the front two first and then I'll do the back two. There on the top plate, you'll see that there are these counter sunk holes. That's the bottom of the top plate. So we'll flip those so that those are on the bottom side and we'll lay our mound on top. We'll flip it over and then we'll grab a few of our counter sunk screws here. We'll thread those into those nuts. Now that we have that in place, we can go ahead and get this mounted on the quadcopter. What we're going to do, we're going to take the double stick tape off of our receiver. I find that I like to just kind of lay him on top and bring the top plate down and put the top plate on. And I'm going to double stick tape the receiver to the bottom of my top plate here. So get that in place. Get my backpack situated. Make sure you're not pinching any of these wires as you get this snugged down in place. And move that camera coax over just a little bit. Just to be better safe than sorry. Now that that's in place, I'm going to take a flat end, like these on my tweezers, or I take my screwdriver, and I'm just going to press that receiver up against the top plate. So now he's secured and he's not bouncing on top of the flight controller. So now with that in place, we'll go ahead and screw down our top plate. And because I'm using the Immortal T antenna, 
I'm going to be using this Immortal T antenna catch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread a longer M3 screw that's provided with that just into the plastic. And then I'm going to push it down through the backpack. I'm going to turn this sideways here so you can see what I'm doing. Swing this out of the way. I'm just going to thread it all the way down through. And then I'm going to put it where I want it before I cinch it down the rest of the way. And I'll take my Immortal T antenna and I'll be keeping the coax on this inside of the mount to keep it outside of the prop. And I'll bend the antenna down through that mount there. And I'll kind of push him down on and secure him. I'm going to take the Immortal T antenna wrap and using a zip tie. I'm going to wrap it around the antenna. You'll notice that the two holes in that antenna wrap are going to line up when I do that. And I can zip tie through those holes and through the bottom that's bolted on to secure my Immortal T antenna in place. go now that he's not going anywhere. Now if you're going to be installing a 2.4 gigahertz receiver or anything with this whip style flexible antenna, there are a couple antenna mounts that are options. Um, it will come, this comes as a set of two and I'll just put it on this side so you can see I'll demonstrate on the one side and you can reciprocate it on the other. But in order to get the best range out of these antennas, we're going to bring them outside the quad, and we're going to bring them up on an angle and out so that you can get the maximized performance out of these 2.4 receivers. I'm going to put the zip tie in this one first to demonstrate how that works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be pushing the zip tie in top hole first and it's going to come through and down. I'm going to pull all the way until that head is locked in on that feature. I'll take the zip tie and I'll bend it and I'll push it through this bottom hole. It's going to redirect the zip tie up and then we'll stick it through to complete the loop. Now that I've got that pulled, it's going to kind of roll him up a bit. I'm going to cut it here where the antenna bends. So I've got that semi-rigid piece of zip tie material. Then I'll go ahead and I'll fix this down on, going through the backpack post into that standoff. Like so. And with the receiver, inside double stick tape to the top plate I can now take my antenna and I can just place it on this zip tie and then I can secure it with electrical tape or I can secure it with heat shrink tubing which is the method I prefer which is just put the heat shrink tubing over the top of the antenna and then shrink that down on there and now you have your 2.4 gigahertz antennas up away from the body of the quad and also out on an angle so you can maximize performance of the, the quad's reception in any orientation. All right, now we'll do something about this GPS cable. The GPS for the quad is going to be, let me get some my area cleaned up here a little bit. It's going to be mounted up on top of the GoPro. Now before you put your GPS in the top face plate, uh, remember to thread the screw in first into this standoff because that screw head's not going to be accessible any longer. Push it into place and it'll kind of click into place there with the connector exposed out there on the bottom where you can get at it. And then we're going to insert, you'll see that I've already inserted some M3 nuts here into the face plate. And then using provided hard the provided hardware in the the mount kit we'll just snug that up and i'm going to do it on this right side only you notice that i'm 
I'm going to be doing it on this side that doesn't have the cable track. Um, and that's so I can thread this cable up through the cable track and into the GPS before I bend this over, and lock it down into place. All right, so now that I've got that threaded through, I'm going to take long ram three screw, poke it up through the cable track hole here. Careful not to pinch any wires. I'm just going to bend that cable track over and in. Locking it down there. You'll see that if you have a little bit of extra cable here and you're worried about it getting in the prop, you can go ahead and poke that into the, into the body of the quad. I've never had an issue of that coming out. And that's how you get the, this is the Hero 9 faceplate that's got the GPS. And you notice that the Hero 9 faceplate has a shatter resistant polycarbonate screen in there uh, to protect that front lens of the Hero 9 camera. So let's move on to the final touch, which is going to be adding our Velcro strap. Now your battery strap might, uh, your battery strap will come with the hook in it. I've clipped that hook off and I've inserted a 20 millimeter standoff. Let me grab that out. I've taken the 20 millimeter standoff and I've put it in place of that hook. And what I'll do with the rubberized end of the strap facing the GoPro, going to run that through the top standoff. I'm just going to loosely Velcro it down while I get it fixed in place with two more M3 screws. Now that I've got that locked in place, I'll grab my Hero 9 and I'll show you how it mounts in the mount here. Locked into place by inserting it into the mount. We'll take this compound cinch strap and we'll pull him nice and tight. Now we've got the Hero 9 nice and secure. We've got our GPS up high where it'll get good reception and range. We've got our vertical antenna mounts to maximize the performance of our receiver as well as our video link. Um, after you go ahead and bound your, uh, your Cadex HD system, then you'll take your backpack and you'll insert the top first by pushing and letting it catch. And then you'll push up on it and you'll just maneuver this back bottom lip until it catches, securing the backpack lid down in place. Now you've got your Vista protected from the elements, but also open to the air in the front so it can get some air cooling. Now that we've got the GoPro in, I can show you this compliant GoPro mount comes in two different angles. It'll swing through 20 degrees. This one is the 20 to 40 degrees. If you want a more shallow angle, there's also a 10 to 30 degrees. I find that on the six inch Ruxus, I like to run about 30 um, degrees of tilt. So I'm going to take, I'm going to rotate the camera until it's about 30 degrees. And if you are, really wanting to, you can bring this mount up to about 40 or back down to 20, depending on your flying style and flying needs. Hope you enjoyed this build walkthrough of the Rebel Ruckus. Go ahead and hit that like button, uh, follow the video description for more videos, and learn more about your FPV platform. Skyberries signing off.
right, welcome to the analog segment of this build. So if you've been following the first part, we got our motors mounted, we got the first part of our frame assembled, we got our battery lead and our capacitor soldered on underneath here. Uh, the analog flight controller differs from the digital flight controller. There are a couple more options on the bottom side uh, instead of the single pad. The receiver also uses 5 volts, so we'll brad bridge from the middle pad here to the 5 volt pad. And the video transmitter, because we're using the Rush VTX, it takes full battery voltage, so we'll, build, we'll bridge from this back pad to this middle pad here. Go ahead and grab some solder and do this. Now go ahead and make sure that you haven't accidentally bridged between all three because that could damage the flight controller. You only ever want to be bridging two of these um, voltage selectors at a time. Now in this particular build we're not going to be adding a GPS, but if you were going to be adding a GPS, I'll show you how to wire it up. Uh, the GPS comes with this extended lead here on the GPS cable to mount the GPS up on top of the faceplate. If you're curious to see how that's done and follow through that process, feel free to jump back over to the digital portion of this build log on the Ruxus, and you can see how this antenna gets mounted up in the faceplate. I'm going to show you how to wire it up to the analog flight controller as it is a bit different than the digital flight controller. We're going to start by adding our ground and five volts. You see here I've got the pads already pre-tinned. So I'm going to just make sure that I've got a nice clean solder tip here because I'm going to be doing some more detailed, detail-oriented soldering. And I find that it's easiest for me to start at the bottom of the, the board and move my way up so I don't drag my soldering iron into wires that I've already soldered. So let me grab my, uh, I'm gonna start with the black wire here first, my ground wire. I'm gonna use my tweezers to kind of help me line him up. I'm just gonna set him on the pad here and then bring my iron down into it to make that connection. Move on to my positive five volts. Now I'll move on to my green wire here, which is my, I'm going to go to the RX pad. My blue wire here will go to my TX pad. Right now we've got our GPS mounted up. We're ready to take this flight controller and stick him on the quadcopter. So we're pulling our quadcopter over here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip our flight controller upside down. We're going to plug in our ESC to the flight controller, and then we'll just rotate the flight controller over onto the posts, making sure that we're lining up our forward arrows here with the front of the quadcopter. We'll go ahead and put down a few of our M3 nuts. We're going to use our nut driver to just kind of cinch those down. We don't want to squeeze down on these rubber gummies too much. We don't want them to be pushing out, but we also don't want this M3 nut to be too high because that's where we're going to be mounting our video transmitter and our uh, receiver. There we go. At this point, we're just going to take the GPS and we're just going to let him fall out the side of the quadcopter for now. So we're going to be using our nano crossfire receiver on this build. 
Um, you can look at the links in the description. I'll show you how to wire up a uh, other receiver. For example, this FR Sky 2.4 gigahertz receiver. It does have a little bit of a different antenna capture design. So go ahead and, and look at those uh, key points in the captions if you want to skip straight to that point in the video. So we'll take our receiver and we're going to plug him here into the receiver tab because we did fast track our build by ordering our receiver with the cables already connected. We can just go ahead and plug him straight in. Next we're going to take our camera and same thing with the camera. We opted for the quick build kit option so it came with this cable harness already plugged into the camera ready to go. We'll plug him here into the camera port. And next we will grab our video transmitter and with the cable on the video transmitter we will plug him here into our VTX port. So now that we've got everything connected up and hanging out the sides of our car, we're going to go ahead and start to mount things. First, we're going to take our camera mount and we'll insert a camera into the camera mount here and we'll use some of our M2 hardware to fix that in place. Now making sure we don't pinch our cables, I'm just going to kind of grab the wiring harness here while I push the camera nose down on those front posts. Then I'll just take my tweezers or, or pliers, I'll just kind of wrap that harness down in on the camera there. Next thing I'm going to do is take and turn my attention to my receiver and my video transmitter. On the receiver here, I've already peeled off the double stick thermal tape. I'm going to do the same here for my video transmitter. I'm going to grab, oh, oops, didn't mean to do that yet. Okay. Now before we mount the video transmitter and receiver, we're going to prepare our top plate with whatever GoPro mount we're going to be using. In this case, we're going to be using our uh, compliant 20 to 40 degree hero mount with a hero 8 faceplate. You can get a hero 9 faceplate and GPS options as well. And you see here I've wired the GPS into the quad, but I'm going to be removing it as I'm not going to be using a GPS faceplate. I just wanted to demonstrate how that wires up to the analog flight controller. So first thing we're going to do by to, to get our compliant mount ready to go, you can see that it's it's compliant because it flexes through the angle. And to control that, we're going to first insert three pieces of hardware into the bottom of this mount. The first is going to be a regular M3 nut, and this takes a little bit of force to get down into its nut capture. So I find it's easiest with a pair of pliers to just push on the inside of that nut to get him started down in his nut trap, and then I'll finish it off by just applying some firm pressure until he pops into place. Now that he's in place, we'll take our M3 lock nut with the nylon facing toward the back of the mount. We're just going to drop him in to this spot in the front. And you'll see that he fits pretty loose in that pocket and can actually spin. So what we're going to do is we'll take our 30 millimeter long screw and you can see that he's just spinning instead of being able to thread him. So we'll take our, our pliers and we're just going to squeeze on that nut while we thread him into place. You're going to thread that nut all the way through until it comes through this nut and into the back of the print. I'll speed this up a little bit with my electric screwdriver here. don't want to pinch too hard down on this mount here because we do want this M3 nut to spin freely. If you let go of that M3 nut with your pliers, you can see that now by moving the screw, you change the position of this back piece and that in turn controls the angle of that mount. So we'll leave it here in the middle for now as we get it mounted on the top plate. Uh, you'll start mounting it by 
first pressing these M3 nuts into the front and you'll take the countersunk portion of the plate and you'll flip it till it's on the bottom, setting the mount on top and using some of the countersunk screws, we'll go ahead and get that fixed in place. First fixing the front M3 nuts and then fixing the back 3M nut, the back uh, two screws. Now that we've got that mounted in place, we're going to bring our quadcopter frame back in. And I'm just going to set my top plate here while I go ahead and take my receiver and get it ready to be mounted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount my Rush VTX to the top plate here using some of that thermal double stick tape. I'm going to do the same for the receiver. I'm just going to stick them side by side to that top plate with the video transmitter coming out the side and the crossfire coming out the back. Now I did say that I'd show you how to wire up this receiver as well and it gets mounted in the same method but there is a different print to take advantage and maximize the range of these whip antennas. So I'll show you the crossfire mount first. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take our mount here and we're going to set our crossfire receiver down first so it's coming underneath and then we're going to press this antenna mount onto those back two posts. Then we'll take and we will mount our top plate down in. You can see that there are some, some features here on the, the top that will catch it and keep it in place. There we go. So he's down where he wants to be. Make sure everything is settled. This time I am going to remove my GPS as I'm not going to be using it. All right now we've got that GPS out of the way. We're going to take our immortal T antenna. We're going to poke him into the back mount here. Press him down on. And then we're going to take our video transmitter. We're going to press him onto the side here. And using a, a few zip ties, grab them. We're going to first secure our receiver antenna by taking the video transmitter antenna wrap, we're just going to wrap it around that antenna. And then we'll zip tie. We're going to come through the bottom hole first. And we're going to come up through that antenna wrap with the zip tie. And then we're going to run him down through and secure that. And you'll see that this holds the Immortal T antenna vertical in that mount, keeps it from slipping out. It also applies some good cable strain relief so you don't have the antenna breaking here where this coax cable comes into the antenna. I'm going to go ahead and get my cutters and trim off the remaining bit of zip tie. And then same thing goes for the video transmitter. We are going to secure it with two zip ties, one through the top and one coming down through the bottom. Now that that's done, we'll finish up our GoPro mount here by adding our Velcro strap. And on the Velcro strap, I have elected to cut off the plastic buckle that is on the back here. Let's see if I can grab this. You see I've inserted the 20 millimeter standoff that goes in the back here through the mount. And then I'm going to mount that so that I have just the cinch strap there in the back. And I'll finish this mount off by 
oh, 20 millimeter standoff here where he goes. And then I will button down the rest of the build by not forgetting to add the screws for the top plate. ready for our GoPro, in this case our Hero 8 with the Hero 8 faceplate if I were going to be using the Hero 9 or Hero 7 or uh, Session, then I would just mount the corresponding faceplate on here and the cinch strap can tighten that down and with everything together you can see how we're able to change the uh, camera angle by moving that screw. All right, there you got it. One more analog ruckus, uh, ready to go tear up the mountains. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, build tutorial. I hope you found it instructive. Go ahead and follow the links in the description to learn a little bit more about your gear, about the quad, see just what this thing is capable of. Happy flying.